It's something that single-handedly put me off sunny in chairs. I got you, babe, for the rest of my days. It's a bit of pop culture that has transcendent entertainment to become fodder for philosophy and pathways to personal redemption. Of course, I'm talking about that remarkable Bill Murray vehicle of the 90s, Groundhog Day. Murray plays Phil Connors, a misanthropic meteorologist who is forced to cover that strangest of all American bubba mices, the emergence of a large rodent who determines the length of the remaining winter. But something strange and magical happens. On the morning of the furry prophecy, Phil arises, bleary-eyed at 6 a.m. to the clock radio chimes of Sonny and Cher, and lives out a full 24 hours again and again and again. At first, he resists his Sisyphus-like time prison, then embraces it, and then learns lessons about life, love, and what is truly important. There are many high holiday-ready themes to glean from this deceptively simple rom-com. One of them is the futility of sameness, as comforting as it may be for many of us, and the inevitability of change, particularly change for the better. Our culture is overflowing with trite but true axioms, helping us to adjust to change. Like the classic, the only thing that is constant is change. But this bromide is as insightful as it is clever. Despite this constant, we often feel quite conflicted. We are both excited yet fearful of transitions into the unknown, embracing of them yet reticent, hopeful yet skeptical. And whether we are ready or not, the changes come fast and furiously. The first time we leave home on our own, starting a new life with a new family, overcoming tragedy, failure, and disappointment, ending a marriage, retiring from a long and fulfilling career, admitting that we need support when older, and our ultimate passing to whatever stage lies ahead. Resistance is futile, as a much-beloved science fiction series reminds us, but it is in our capacity to endure, overcome, and integrate change that we forge a truly purposeful life. Because Change and transitions are woven into the very fabric of our being and our reality. Birth, growth, decay, and rebirth are the cycle to which we are all bound, from the mightiest mountains to the tiniest cells. From evolutionary theory to supernovas and the formation of planets, change and transitions are the fundamental definition of our existence. And so, why resist this actual force of nature? Why are we so uncomfortable, anxious, and afraid of our common destiny? Perhaps it's our hardwired caution against recklessness, a part of our survival instinct. Though change is absolute, maybe our skittishness is a way to balance how we best use our transitions. Yet some of us become too rooted, too immovable, too unbalanced in our response to change. And that's where the treasury of accrued wisdom comes in, from the sacred, sacred stories of our tradition to the self-help aisles of our virtual bookstores. Our civilization has long sought to ease our discomfort with this way of the world. The wildly popular self-help book, Who Moved My Cheese?, recounts a fable about rodents, yes, again with the rodents, <laughs> and their search for cheese in a maze as a powerful metaphor for how we anticipate, adapt, and eventually enjoy change. But mercifully, greater minds address this need much further in the past. The classic Greek philosopher Heraclitus taught that, quote, no man ever steps in the same river twice, for it's not the same river and he's not the same man. The eminent scholar of myth, Joseph Campbell, best known as George Lucas's inspiration for Star Wars, found a universal theme in most sacred traditions, the hero's journey. 
An individual embarks on a path of adventure, overcomes obstacles, gleans lessons, and then, changed by the experience, brings the boon of insight back to the larger community. But Campbell points out that while many of these myths provide a shared group history and identity, they are also meant to gird our courage as individuals as we chart our way through life's journey. In our own tradition, there are powerful stories and lessons that speak to the epic saga of our singular sojourn through the years. Adam and Eve are exiled from the childhood of Eden to the challenges, challenges and triumphs of independent adult life in the real world. Abraham is called to leave family and friends and the security of the familiar to create a new life and a new people based on new ideas. Moses and the Israelites are liberated from the shackles of sameness to the fearful freedom of the unknown, with faith in God and the God within themselves to sustain their redemptive road to the promised land. When read in this way, these stories are as familiar as they are intimate, preparing us for the transitions from youthful dependence to adult self-sufficiency, as we course through rites of passage that eventually enable us to create our own lives and our own families, and the cycle repeats again and again. A joke I heard from an Orthodox rabbi. How many Orthodox rabbis does it take to change a light bulb? The answer, change will never change. <laughs> Our very own reform movement emerged from the need for Judaism to do what it has always done, the key to its survival and longevity, the ability to respond to the needs of the times, to balance transcendent values that speak to any generation with the sensibilities and modes that are meaningful to the current generation, allowing us to live in the present while learning from the past. The same forces that upend our individual lives towards growth and improvement impact our people, our ideals, and the ways in which we live by them. A healthy and balanced response to transitions and change is at the center of what we are all doing here today. Tshuva, repentance, a return to our better selves, to better bonds with others, and to our best encounter with God. The process we celebrate on this holiest of days is the Jewish take on change as we embrace the inevitable with an eye and heart toward not simply living through it, but growing from it. Tshuva inspires us both to experience change and to assess it, to take a step back and use milestones as vantage points on our lives, a chance to see where we've been, where we are going, where we are and where we are going. What a gift, what a blessing to have the insight to take what might instill only dread and insecurity and leverage it into life-giving acts and enlightened perspective. This summer, I marked my double nickel birthday, 55, as I did my 50th by climbing Colorado's Mount Aspen on the strenuous Ute Trail. The route encompasses 3,000 feet in three miles, all at altitude, from 8,000 feet to more than 11,000 feet. The first third is a trial of the thighs and calves. The remainder is a proving ground for lungs deprived of oxygen. I was proud to have completed the climb five years ago especially at the half-century mark. But this year, my son Ben joined me in the weeks before he would leave for college in his newly independent life. Cindy and I, she's not looking at me now, she doesn't want to look at me, are still reeling a bit from what this transition means for us as our nest is now empty and we circle back to where we started. But I found this year's ascent to be a powerful metaphor for both Ben's important transition and my own. We spoke of life and music and philosophy on our climb when my panting and fatigue allowed for it. 
Yet there was something remarkable, something indelible, something transcendent in just being present in that moment together. I'm not sure what he was thinking, probably that this old man is holding him up. <laughs> but my thoughts and memories drifted to his childhood when any walk of any distance required that I would eventually have to carry him on my back. The struggles to plod along up the mountain mirrored my, mirrored my struggles as a parent and his as a young man, seeking to summit the peaks of an ever-changing world. But perhaps most importantly, as he had followed me for most of the last 18 years, I now followed him up the mountain as he blazed a trail with toned legs, well-trained stamina, and valiant heart, leading me to new places, new horizons, and a new life. His unforgiving pace took me to a record time, a good half hour better than when I was five years younger. And as we surveyed the breathtaking, or should I say breath-reclaiming views at the top of the snow-covered Rockies, we shared a snapshot in time, one that would bind us forever, as much as it laid a path to our inevitable, but still wistful, parting. Here's a melody that captures the magnitude and the miracle of life's inherent variety and our capacity to be transformed by it. my love and I took it down Climbed a mountain and I turned around And I saw my reflection in the snow-covered hills Till the landslide brought me down Oh, mirror in the sky, what is love? Can the child within my heart rise above can i sail through the changing ocean tides can i handle the seasons of my life mm -mm. i don't know mm -mm. i don't know well i've been afraid of changing But time makes you bolder, children getting older, I'm getting older too, oh, I'm getting older too, oh, take my love, take it down, oh, climb a mountain if you turn around, and if you see my reflection in the snow-covered hills will the landslide bring it down and if you see my reflection in the snow-covered hills will the landslide bring it down oh Amen.